if you run a query in MapMate, for instance, by going to the analysis section, and we'll just run the browse all records query, what you get from a query is something that looks a bit like a spreadsheet. MapMate refers to this as a browse list, and it's simply a table showing all the data that has resulted from the query that you've just run. And whether you run the query from the analysis section, as we just did, or from the data entry window, you end up with a similar looking browse list. At the top of every browse list, there's a standard set of buttons that um, perform various functions. So it's worth getting to know what all these buttons do. You'll, you'll regularly use them every time you do query your data. So we'll just run across these from right to left. The first button here takes you to MapMate's help files. The second button is a change defaults button. If you click on that, it takes you to the familiar defaults box where you can choose to look at a particular county or change your taxon group if you need to. If you do change anything there and OK it, you'll then need to rerun the query to see that take effect. The next two buttons are to do with viewing and editing a record. So if the record is one of yours that you've entered, you can click on it, you can click anywhere in the row for that particular record, and then go to the View button and it will open up the original data entry window. If it is a record that you've added onto your copy of MapMate, you'll also be able to edit it by clicking on the Edit button, and at that point you can make changes to the record. Once you've made the change, just click on the Save button, and that will close the data entry window. You won't actually see any change in the browser list straight away. You'll have to rerun the query again to actually see the change take effect. If there's a record on your database that's come in from a sync file from somebody else, the edit button will be greyed out and you won't be able to edit that person's record. So that's the view record and edit record buttons. Continuing across, the next two buttons are very simple. They either take you to the first record in the list or to the last record in the list. It's just a quick way of getting from top to bottom of the list. Next we get to what is a pair of binoculars on the next button, and that's indicating a Find button. This works in any of the columns. For instance, if you click in the Cite column, click on the Find button, you can put in um, all or part of a site name and it will find the first time that that site occurs in your list. It doesn't make it very obvious when it's found it but if you look for that black triangle on the left hand side that's showing you the first time that the word Broughton in this case appears in my list. And having found the first I can continue to the next record and the next record and so on. After the Find button, we have two Sorting buttons, and again these will work with any of the columns. You can sort into the English Name column and put that alphabetical A to Z, or the other way around, Z to A. But it will also do that with the, the Date column, if you put that into Date order. You'll see that it treats dates for complete years in a different sequence to dates for days. So you get all the year records first in the list, and then it comes on to the days later on. So it actually sorts them into two separate sequences. But if most of your records have full day dates, you'll find them in the correct date order from there. The next few buttons are to do with selecting and copying and saving the data. It's not actually possible to print from a browse list in MapMate. Um, there's, there's no direct way of getting it out to a printer, but MapMate does make it very easy for you to copy your records and paste them into a word processing document or spreadsheet document and print them from there. The two buttons here, for instance, if you click on Select All, it will highlight all the records in your current browse list, and you can remove that selection with the Clear Selection button. As well as selecting all the records in one go, you can select them individually by clicking on the grey rectangle on the left hand side of the browse list. So if we click here, that selects just that one record. You can then go a little bit further down, press the shift key and click the, the grey rectangle again and it will highlight a whole block of records. You can also press the control key and click the left hand grey box to pick up individual records to add to your selection. 
so you have complete control over which of those records are actually selected. Having selected the records that you want to be able to move somewhere else and perhaps print out, you then have the option of either just copying the records into your computer's memory so that you can then paste them into another document, or you can save that selection of records directly as a tab separated text file and by default MapMate takes you to the My MapMate folder under Data there's another folder called Output and that's where these tab text files get saved by default but you can of course choose to save them somewhere else. Having saved the tab text file you can then open that file into a spreadsheet or into another database package. But if you don't want to save it as a text file you just click on Copy Selection you can then go and open up your spreadsheet software and if you just do a paste it will put the record straight into the spreadsheet for you and it will also tell you the name of the query that you ran to get that particular set of records. Sometimes you'll see that the dates don't fit into the column properly and you end up with this series of hash signs but if you just um, double click at the top of the date column or just stretch it out a little bit to create space for it, the dates will appear. You can do exactly the same copy and paste operation to go into a word processing document. So we've selected our records again, we click on copy selection, go and open up the word processor and paste into there and the information gets pasted in. It actually goes in to the word processor's table format, uh, which means that you can then have control over how you manage your table and put in grid lines and change the font sizes and do all those sorts of things. Okay, so that set of buttons are all to do with selecting and copying and saving records. The last few buttons here, the uh, triangle here, just reruns the same query all over again. The SQL button takes you into the underlying code for the query. But to get back to seeing the actual records, you can either rerun the query or go right the way over to the left for this View Results button, and that will take you back to the standard view. And there's one button we've missed out here, which is this rather anonymous looking green square and that says view query list and what it does is it takes you back to the list of queries in the analysis section of MapMate. That's a very useful button to get into the habit of using. What many people do when they first start using the analysis section of MapMate is run the query and then click on close at the bottom of the screen which takes you right out of the analysis section. You have to go back in again and find the query that you want. Whereas if you run your query and then use this green square to go back to the query list, it just keeps you in the analysis and you can go and run a different query without having to go right the way out of it and back in again. So those are the main buttons that you get to control your browse lists. There's one or two other options that are worth looking at as well. Um, if we just select a record and hover over it and right click, there's some other options here you get another way of viewing or editing the record which does exactly the same thing as the buttons we saw earlier on. But the next um, things here are different. You have an option here to remove the selected record and that will actually delete the record from your copy of MapMate. So obviously be careful how you use that but if you do need to delete a record that's a quick way of doing it. Archiving a record will keep it in your copy of MapMate, but it will archive it in the sense that when you go on to create a sync file, any record that has been archived will not be included in the sync. So, for instance, if you have some records that need confirming before they get sent off, you could use the archive to control those. Or if you have some records that are meant to be kept confidential and not synced on to anybody else, you can archive those. But just be a bit careful with how you use this because although it prevents the records going out into a sync file, it doesn't prevent them appearing on maps or in any of the queries that you run. So um, it's, it's not a foolproof way of keeping records confidential. Having archived something, if you decide that you then no longer need to have it archived, you can use the resynchronize to bring it back into the main part of the MapMate data. Final little tip about the browse list that might be of use in some cases. 
if you hover with your mouse cursor at the, the top here, one thing you can do is to alter the width of the columns by just finding the join between two columns, click and drag, in much the same way as you can on many spreadsheet software. But another little trick that MapMate has is if you do that right at the left hand side just before the first column and drag it across, it actually opens up a column that is under normal circumstances is hidden away. And this is the GUK or globally unique key for each record. Most of the time you won't need to worry about the GUK at all, but one thing that you can find out from the GUK, if you look at the last three characters, that gives you the CUK or center unique key for the copy of MapMate that originally entered the data. So in this set of records we're looking at we can see that each record was entered by MapMate Center 1PM and those three characters will always give you the code for the actual copy of MapMate where the data was originally entered. So if it's not one of the records that you entered it gives you an idea of where the record has actually come from in case you need to go back and query it. Through. So that's it for browse lists. As I say, every time you run a query on MapMate you get a similar looking sort of table and uh, you'll be able to use those same buttons and functions each time you do that.